So over the last week, I spent a bunch of time studying for this AWS SysOps Administrator Associate exam. I managed to take it and I passed by like 12 points or something. I think you need a 720 to pass and I got like a 732. And I wanted to give you my thoughts on this exam. Is it worth taking? Is it dumb? Is it actually useful? Because when I first heard about these little certificates, I thought they were kind of dumb, right? I thought, you know, having to pay 150 bucks to take an exam just to get certified seems kind of dumb, especially since I've been working in AWS since like 2015. So I've used a ton of their different services. I've, at least I felt like I knew a bunch of their different services. You're supposed to take the cloud practitioner to start off with. I, I haven't even taken that one because I've been dealing with AWS for so long that I felt like I could just skip it. And it turns out I was right because I was able to get the certificate. So what we're looking at here are certificate paths. So basically they tell you which certificates you should train and study for and take. And once you get them, you can consider yourself, you know, a, a systems administrator or something, or you can consider yourself a cloud engineer. After you get certified, you know, you put this on your resume and hopefully an employer can look at that and be like, okay, he got, he actually knows what he's talking about and you'll have a higher chance of getting hired. So the first question, is it worth taking this exam? Do I think this exam was actually useful? Now, like I said, I've been working in AWS since 2015 and along the way I have touched a bunch of different services. I believe AWS has over like 200 services or something, but you only need a subset of those to actually, you know, get a web application deployed. Some of the stuff I have dealt with is RDS, I've done Dynamo, I've done CloudWatch, I've done CloudFront, CloudFormation, Route 53, Lambda, SNS, SES, SQS, like the list just keeps going on of all the stuff I played around with. And before I came into this test, I was kind of overconfident. I'm like, dude, this will be so easy. Like I, just, I know all these services, right? But it turns out there's some services that I just haven't had the opportunity to really play around with, mainly because one of the biggest services and AWS is called EC2. And this is for spinning up an actual like VM where you can provision it, you know, manually install your stuff. And there's a bunch of stuff that surrounds EC2 that I didn't even know existed. Most of the stuff I worked on are serverless applications or managed services. So instead of us deploying to an EC2 instance, we typically opt for like Fargate or ECS, or we would opt for like, you know, Kubernetes EKS, or typically we do lambdas. Like, so we just get a API, we convert it to a serverless enabled API, a mono lambda, and then we deploy it there. So there's a lot of stuff with EC2 that I wasn't really familiar with. And with EC2 comes VPCs. And with VPCs comes VPC connect, VPC peering, all these different things that you don't even know about unless you spent time trying to set it up yourself. And EC2 is just like the tip of the iceberg because when you get into a larger organization with AWS, you can have one AWS account your AWS organization, which controls multiple AWS accounts. And basically you need to find a way to automate and control all those subset accounts. And that's what this test kind of helps you understand is that like there's a ton of services that you can use as you, you know, get into larger and larger scale operations. So for example, let's say you have a bunch of EC2 instances and you want to, as an administrator, you want to like manage those and maybe patch the operating system on all those. Turns out there's a service called AWS Systems Manager which has a patch manager, which you can actually apply patches to this machine. You can do a bunch of other stuff. There's also like AWS organizations, which is again, like the hierarchy, like I talked about for controlling all your different AWS accounts from one account. There's something called AWS config, which again, this is something I haven't heard about because AWS config, and you're able to basically hook into something such as like event bridge to run things when you notice that certain AWS services were configured incorrectly or those configurations were changed. So the point I'm trying to make is I came into this way overconfident with like, oh yeah, I know AWS. But the truth is there's so many services that you have to know about to be able to get this certificate that I actually think the certificate is worth it. Um, I, I For 150 bucks, I think if you have this on your resume, I would actually be like, okay, this guy actually studied and he knew all the different services at one point. And it's not just knowing the services, like you actually have to understand the different configurations and nuances of all the different services. So for example, S3, here's a really quick example. You don't only need to know about like S3 versioning and how to set up like S3 bucket policies. You need to know about the different storage classes and when you choose one over the other. For example, there's like a general purpose, which is probably the one that you're used to using, but there's stuff over here, such as infrequent access, there's archive, there's something called Glacier Deep Archive. There's Glacier Instant Retrieval. There's Glacier Flexible Retrieval and all these things. Like you need to understand the use cases of all of them because more than likely these are going to be on your test if you try to take this certificate. There's like intelligent tiering, stuff like that. Now, I can't really tell you the questions on the exam, but I will say if you want to actually prepare for this exam, this is the approach that I took. So go to this URL and if you want to do the SysOps Administrator, uh, you can go here and then there's a prepare for exam button. 
Honestly, I'd probably do the cloud practitioner first. If you want to get into AWS and DevOps and like cloud, definitely do the cloud practitioner. Like make sure you study, make sure you can actually pass that test. Otherwise, you're probably just going to flail around with AWS and not understand all these different services and what the point of them are. So the test is 130 minutes. It is 65 questions. I think like 10 of the questions or something don't really count. It costs 150 bucks. And I took mine online. I will say if you take it online, it's a little bit stressful. You have to sit there in a room on your laptop the entire time. You cannot get up from your desk. Your webcam has to be on at all times. If your internet connection goes out, they basically disqualify you. If they hear someone else in the room, they'll basically disqualify you. So it's kind of serious. So you need to make sure that you're in a nice environment where there's no noise and you can have like 130 minutes to actually sit around and take this. So how do you actually prepare? Uh, if you click on prepare for exam, they give you a four step guide. Now, a lot of these things, honestly, I started going through these and reading these and I thought it was a giant waste of time for me. Like some of them say that they're like 15 hours in the videos that you watch. I didn't feel like I took that much away from it. But if you want to go through these, at least the free ones and see if they're helpful to you, you can do that. I also subscribe to this um, 29 a month plan just for this month so I can go through here. And the reason I did that is down at the bottom, they have an actual like practice exam. And this exam asks you 61 questions. And so personally, the way I learn is by like taking the practice exams and understanding the questions and then like retaking it. I would say the questions are very tricky. Like you'll get some questions that almost seem exactly the same, but they'll switch out like two different configuration options or two different AWS services. And if you don't know what both of those services do or what both of those options do, you're probably going to get the question wrong. So you really need to know all the services that they're going to quiz you on, but also the options you can configure on those services when you'd use them, when you wouldn't use them, when you pick one over the other, because sometimes there's two different services that may do something similar in AWS, but one answers the question a little bit better. So that's one of the hard things you have to get ready for is like the format of the questions. What are they going to ask? How do they ask it? And getting used to some strategies of like reading through. I will say most of these exam prep videos, they have like a, a video that walks you through some example questions. So they'll give you like one or two example questions and they'll walk you through how to break it down. And then they'll kind of give you the question answers and then they'll tell you why this one's wrong, why they weren't wrong. So go through these, see if they're helpful. Some of these say they take like 32 hours, honestly, like I don't think it took 27 hours to go through all these videos, but maybe they're expecting me to actually study. So another approach that I took is I clicked on review this exam guide and it'll give you a PDF. This is probably the most important thing. You need to print this out or save it and read through it because they're going to tell you down here, they give you a breakdown of what percentages of the test scores go to what category, right? So 20% goes to monitoring, logging, and remediation. So you need to know about CloudWatch. You need to know about hooking things into CloudWatch. You need to know about logging things, CloudWatch events, maybe even EventBridge could be categorized in here. So remediation is like, how do you debug something when something goes wrong? Domain for security and compliance, like you really need to know IAM. You need to know how to create users, how to uh, give those users roles, how those roles attach to policies and how those policies can be configured to allow or deny you to certain resources and how the deny will override the allow. There's just all these little nuances that you need to understand. Domain five was hard for me. This is like the VPC setting up the VPCs, how do you set up a routing table? How do you do a VPC connect between, uh, you know, an on-premise site and AWS? How do you do VPC peering between two regions? How do you do like VPC peer logs? I think it's called peer logging. I, at this point, I've already forgotten, but basically you can like have every single piece of network that hits your VPC be logged out somewhere and you can do filtering on that and more advanced analytics on that. There's, there's something called like VPC log mirroring or something. I've already forgotten a lot of stuff I studied for, to be honest. So that's, so that's one thing about exams that I think are kind of silly is that you spend all this time cramming and studying but then after the exam, you kind of forget half the things you learned because you're not going to actually use them. Like I will probably never use EC2 instances at work because we just believe in serverless and managed uh, servers, right? So I learned a bunch of stuff that I probably won't even need to know about. Number six, cost and performance uh, optimization. So this would be like AWS uh, cost analyzer, AWS budgets, stuff like that. So you really need to understand what they're going to quiz you on. And then luckily, if you scroll down, they give you a list of the different categories in those main domains that they're going to test you on. So you'll need to know about CloudWatch alarms, metrics, CloudWatch dashboards, um, event bridge rules, like what, what is event bridge? Do you even know what event bridge is? What can you do with event bridge? You can basically uh, subscribe to like CloudWatch alarms and you can fan out events to multiple different services with event bridge if you want to. You can hook AWS event bridge up to certain services such as like RDS. 
to get notifications when certain things, you know, stop or start, or I guess that's more like EC2. You can actually get events when EC2 instances are paused or stopped, and then you can run additional things based on those. Yeah, so just knowing all this stuff, honestly, what I did is I copied a domain and I would paste it in the chat GPT and I say, hey, ask me a bunch of hard questions, a multiple choice format, over these categories and I would just do that for like an hour like I would just have it just keep on asking me questions I f until I felt confident with the responses and I will say that that helped me understand the services a little bit better but again like there's some questions that you're going to get on the test that are just very complex and like nuanced you might be laughing at that statement because you're like dude this is just an associate exam right this is for like you know junior and mid developers which I agree, this test isn't too hard. And like, I don't think you have to be a senior engineer to be able to pass this. You just need to take time to study. But I was only given like a week to study and take the exam and luckily I passed. So hopefully I'll stay employed for a little bit longer before the government decides to uh, shut everything down. Also down here, there's an appendix. Um, I believe if you look through this list, let me just look. So everything that's in this list, I believe was on the exam or at least in the practice exams. So like AWS control tower. I didn't know what this was before I took the exam. I believe this is a way to like spin up and manage other AWS accounts inside your AWS organization. But honestly, just use ChatGPT, use AI and ask it questions. So AWS Control Tower is a service that helps organizations set up and govern secure multi-account AWS environments based on AWS back practices. It simplifies the process of creating and managing multiple AWS accounts using AWS organizations. So again, I, I never actually logged into the dashboard for AWS Control Tower. I never even played with this. But the point of the exam is like to know that these services exist and when you can potentially use them at your day job. If you run into a scenario where you might need this, it's nice to know that there's something out there that's been already created that can help you with whatever you're trying to do. But all these other ones like System Manager, yeah, you should know about. Trusted Advisor, you should probably know about. Data Sync, Transfer. I'll definitely say it's overwhelming trying to understand like at a high level, what all these AWS services do. Something like S3, you should really know front and back because it's like one of the core services on AWS. Something like uh, AWS Guard Duty, maybe you just need to know a little bit about it. Like AWS Snowmobile, did you know they have an option to send you an actual semi truck that has like servers in it where you can back up your data at your data center into the the truck and then Amazon will drive that truck away and basically copy all your data to a secure location for backup and redundancy. It's stuff like this that you don't know even exists until you're like forced to learn about it. Anyway, that's my overview. Go to this page. You can follow the four step plan. You can review that PDF like I talked about. You can go online. There's like a YouTube video that's three days long. Like I'm not even kidding. It's like 72 hours long of tutorial on Free Code Camp, And he walks you through every single AWS service that you might need. Uh, See, so yeah, I think it's this one. This one's like two hours. Prepare for the SysOps Administrator Associate Exam. I would watch through this at two times speed and just understand the different services. He'll actually load up the dashboard and like show you how to set up different services. I think that's a step too far, but maybe you might need that. He also starts talking about like TCP and network transfer layers. Some of the stuff it's like he went into too much detail. I think this one is the one I actually like kind of powered watch through. It's 11 hours long and I kind of like skip the different sections to find. I do believe there's another one that's literally like three days long. I don't know where that one is, but it was intense. Like this one's 81 hours long. Like this guy's not playing. Like he went through every single service. So definitely go check out Free Code Camp. They have some good resources. And I would say don't rush it. Like give yourself at least a couple of weeks, maybe even a month or two to really understand all the services and how you can configure them and the different options. And I think you'll do really good on the exam. All right, that's all I wanted to talk about. I hope some of the information I said in this video can help you prepare for this exam and helped you understand if this exam would be worth it to you or not. Let me know in the comments if you have taken an exam, if you thought this one was hard, maybe you failed and you had to retake it. Let me know. I'm curious. All right. Have a good day. Happy coding.